Good morning, Facebook. Haven't seen you guys in like six weeks or more. I've been hiding like the groundhog, I guess. Hold on one second, my coffee is over here. Oh, not helpful to have it so far away. Not there. Um, so it's actually really warm in my room today. How's everyone doing? How's the week going? Let me know if you can hear me, okay? I've got these headphones in and I don't know if you guys can hear me. So can you please, like, give me some likes or some loves if you can hear me? Because I want to make sure that I'm not talking to nobody. Um, so when you jump on, just let me know if you can hear me, okay? Cool. I don't know why there's angry faces, but... Oh well. Um, let's see. Say hi when you get on too. I love to know who's on and who's watching. Uh, this live stream is kind of my reintroduction into the world. I am doing this live on Facebook right now, um, mostly because I haven't figured out how to go live on YouTube yet. Um, and I am going to be doing that though. I'm going to be doing most of my live streams from here on out on youtube and just sharing the link here later just because i'm trying to get a larger audience but this morning i just kept getting this message that i didn't really need to do that and that this was more for my facebook audience again my little reintroduction sweet philip thank you cool thanks tyler awesome i'm glad you guys can hear me i don't know sometimes when i use headphones if you can hear me or if it's all crackly or whatever um cool so Hi! For those of you who don't know me, I'm Karen Terrace, and I am a, let's see, today let's go with whole life alignment expert, because I know in the past I've really concentrated on parenting, and other times I really concentrate on, on body work and massage therapy, and really what I've learned in the last six weeks of me being not really on social media or anything like that is this, this real profound understanding that it's all connected that my oh hello deb rosenberg how are you today i haven't seen you in a minute hold on i'm gonna see if i can get this going better because my light just decided to die hold on it's like super dark in my room if i don't have a light on so What is happening? Hold on. Does it go this way? So unprofessional. Try that. Hold on, guys. Two seconds. I guess my light just decided to die so you know there's that <laughs> I hope that the lighting is good enough that's so weird it's literally like not plugging in and taking a charge at all which kind of sucks it feels like maybe the USB part broke anyway I'll just put that there for now then because <laughs> it's not doing anything okay cool so today's okay where was I Okay, so the live stream today really is going to be focusing on a lot of what I've been realizing, which is so many of the things that I've been teaching about parenting is really stuff that you can learn whether you're a parent or not, and is more ways that you can teach the next generation if you are a parent. So there's a lot of what I teach that absolutely adults can learn. And honestly, adults need to learn it, especially because we're so ingrained in what we believe to be true that um, 
you get reactionary, right? So the whole reason why I did this live stream today was because yesterday I posted about how your low back pain is due to your lack of standards and a lot of people came back to me with very, um, it looks fine. Okay, cool. I'm glad. The it's just like snowing slash raining out here, so I can never tell if the lighting is okay or not. So thank you, Allison, for what? Sorry. Yeah, Allison. I also don't have my glasses on, so I don't know. Okay, I'm going to take some coffee and recenter after that. You know, live streams with me, guys. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> At least the husband's home, and he can hang out with the kids, and they won't be coming in to bother me. <laughs> um... So, when I speak about whole life alignment, what I'm really talking about, and pleasurable parenting, and all of the different little catchphrase things that you hear me talk about, those are more for um, myself, for my compartmentalization, because I am a human. Humans love to compart compartmentalize. And also for, like, courses. So, you guys know about my Pleasurable Parenting Academy. That was really specifically created for parents who realize that there's something going on with their kids and they want to be able to fix it, but they also know that it's their responsibility to deal with all of their old problems, too, as they're raising their children. So, that's what the Pleasurable Parenting Academy really does. Um, the next time I run that, I'm actually going to do it in person only. So, you're going to have to be here in Salt Lake to get that. So, that's going to be amazing. Mmm, coffee. Yes, Deb. I got my... Still doing it the same as I always have, too. A little bit of coffee. A whole lot of cream. This time it's coconut milk, though. And, like, agave syrup. <laughs> hi to Ryan and the Littles. I'll tell them hi, Deb. Deb's known me for forever, literally, since I was like nine years old. So this is fun. I'm awesome that you're here and can watch this. I'm going to put this down though in case I get, I got a little crazy with my hands sometimes. So, and then whole life alignment. What does that really mean? What does that look like? For me, um, last year when I started really talking about whole life alignment, I got pushed into the parenting because I realized that my parenting style was pretty much the only thing in my life that wasn't aligned with the rest of how I lived. And so I kind of veered that way really a lot, but I am a massage therapist. I am a structural alignment therapist and I've been massaging people since for as long as I can remember. I remember being that girl at Girl Scout camp that people would want me to like pop their backs for them after we went horseback riding or, um, you know, I'd be sitting there in, in an assembly or something like rubbing my friend's hand or like tickling her arm or something just because I could tell that there was something wrong and she'd be like oh my god my hands like was cramping from writing all so much yesterday how did you know and I'm I don't know I just did I would just start massaging her <laughs> and I love you forever I love you too Deb um so I've just, I've always been a massage therapist and my specialization for massage is something called structural alignment therapy, which is very similar to rolfing. It's very clinical. It's very deep work that is slow and, um, integrates a lot of, uh, neuromuscular unwinding. So that's like where I would hold and instead of trying to strip through, which is what you're used to with a deep tissue massage, it's like a hold and then I'd start moving. Obviously, you're like laying on a table. I'd start like moving your arm and because of the movement of your arm, that's what's getting my hand to move. Instead of like when you think about rolfing or even really deep tissue, it's like the stripping that's going on, right? So that's what a huge part of what I do is different is because it is really slow and methodical and we can end up chasing lines that don't that you would think don't really relate to what is going on so some people will come into me and they've got massive massive headache and I'll start working their neck and then I end up working most of the session in their gut or something or uh, they come in with low back pain and we end up doing the entire session on their feet so when I talk about whole life alignment, I was always very, very clinical, very logical, very coming from my structural brain and then trying to incorporate this parenting thing because I could see the generational wounding. And as I dealt with my own trauma and did my own deep work over the last almost two years, because you guys know I really started diving into this journey 
when my daughter was about six weeks old and she is she'll be two in June so like in a couple more months so I'm almost at like the two-year anniversary um, honestly if you talk to my mom I've been doing this for my whole life like she tells me stories of when I was like five or six and I would t uh, read um, I could I would tell her that there were like people in the room and stuff and maybe they were spirits and then once we changed from being Catholic to Unitarian she was pagan and she really helped me like learn about energy fields and stuff like that so I could see auras and I'm actually starting to get that back that's something that I had totally closed off in my teen years because people made fun of me and I had a lot of others trauma going on so when I started clearing my trauma from my childhood all these other parts of my life started shifting and changing and a huge 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 thing for me was fibromyalgia okay so I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia in 2009 and as a lot of you probably know fibromyalgia is actually a diagnosis of non-diagnoses so what that means is that I got tested for MS and for lupus and for all like Parkinson's all these diseases they that they can actually test for in a lab and when all of those came back negative but I was still having all of this pain uh, they were like oh well then it must be fibro that's how they diagnose fibromyalgia actually it's also how they diagnose uh, like IBS and other things like that that um, there's these really clinical tests like a certain protein is created and that would mean that you've got you know Crohn's disease versus IBS and there's all these things that they can actually test for they've isolated the protein they've isolated the the genetic mutation or whatever it is that shows them you for sure have this disease and then there's a whole category of diseases that essentially you have that disease if you don't have all the rest of them. So that's what it means to have a diagnosis of, of non-diagnoses. And the fibro was insane. I literally, I couldn't move, I couldn't play, I couldn't get up and walk. Uh, most days I was just laying in my bed and really like ready to just die because I also didn't want to take any of the medications. Um, I've told this story before, but a little recap. I actually um, drove for about two hours on my medications without knowing it and was apparently leaving. Like I had all this stuff packed in my car. Um, my, I called my friend down in Tory, and I was literally running away from my life, but I was on pharmaceutical meds at the time. So I didn't actually like consciously realize it. And after that episode, I told my doctor that I wasn't going to take any more pills. I think I was meant to come across you today. I have an autoimmune disease. That's amazing, Allison. Yeah, absolutely. I knew there was a reason why I needed to push this back an hour, so I'm so glad you could be here. So when, um, when I told my doctor that I didn't want to take any more of the meds, he had known that I had used cannabis during my, preg my first pregnancy because I had really bad morning sickness. I lost 25 pounds in my first trimester with my oldest. So he suggested, I live in Utah, so it's not like he straight up came out and said use cannabis. He suggested that I Google fibromyalgia natural medicine Arizona. And I came across all these articles about cannabis and all this stuff. So I was a big, huge advocate of using cannabis dis-ease out of alignment with self exactly deb exactly that's what the word dis-ease comes from from dis-ease you're not in alignment with yourself and in western in sorry in chinese in ancient chinese medicine and more energetic based medicines they say if it physicalizes that means that every other part of your body of your being is already out of whack so there's a reason why i sat with my beautiful yoga chick behind me um because when you see her, she's got her physical form, right? And she's got these energy centers in the middle of her, but there's all this other stuff like swirling around her. And that's what I mean, like by your aura and your erythral body and, you know, more of that energetic stuff. They can actually scan um, latest technology and heart mapping shows that everybody's heart uh, actually emits its own electromagnetic wave that goes out to we've been able to measure it out to eight feet but that's because the instrument that they're using to measure maxes out at eight feet that doesn't mean that the heart 
energy field itself maxes out at eight feet. It's just that the instrument that they're using only goes to eight feet. So it could go the whole size of your house, you know, and you see these people that, you know, when you tell someone like they have a big heart, like that's kind of what we're referring to this, this capacity we open and to share with so many people and to receive that love back. And then you think about like the Grinch and how his heart was two sizes too small. And you think about a small hearted person or a cold hearted person. And that's when maybe you, when you come in contact with them, you can feel that their energy field is closed off. Now this is energy that's being scientifically proven. So that is what, that's what really turns me on and lights me up because I understand science so well. I am one of those geeks that sits there and reads scientific studies. I devour any sort of neuroscience and anatomy science and pathology. You know, like I really love and understand that. And then the other side of me is like a total woo-woo, hippie heart, reiki, acupuncture, tarot cards, divine consciousness, light grid, all of it. Like that's my other passion. So how do you put the, how do you take a super logical thing and a very intuitive thing and put them together? Well, that's whole life alignment. That's being able to take all of the parts of you even your shadow self, which I've done a couple of live stream on that and integrate it and put it all together. So when I say that chronic pain and mental illness and how your children are behavior behaving, they all are related. It's because of your own dis-ease in yourself. So let's wrap that back up. So what do I mean? My post yesterday was about low back pain and how your low back pain is actually caused by a lack of standards and values on your part. And I had a bunch of people, including Deb. Oh, I'm going to finish my thought and then I'm going to review these, these comments, um, including Deb, make a comment that was very logic based. That was like, mine is because of, I think Deb was a, a back, the low back is there's degenerated discs. And another person was all like, I lay brick all day. And another person was like, whatever. They're just making all these comments. And what it came down to is me realizing that yes, those are all true, but what caused it to begin with is what I was actually talking about. What I was meaning is if you suffer from low back pain, yeah, maybe it's because of, um, you know, standing in properly for however many years or laying brick or, um, a car accident or whatever, but there's lots of people that go through those exact same situations and don't end up with low back pain or any pain at all. My baby is screaming and I have to remember that my husband is home. So I'm sorry if you can hear her. Um, so, and that comes down to standards and values and things that we're not teaching our kids, which is why it all fits together. So let me read your comments and then I'm going to keep going because I don't want to miss anything. This is, I don't ha want to take meds either. They made me feel like a naughty girl for w not wanting the meds they were offering. Yeah, that's the pharmaceutical industry, Allison. It's a capitalist, corrupt capitalism because capitalism, when it's used properly, is actually really amazing as we can see in like uber and lyft and airbnb and things like that but pharmaceutical companies and doctors doctors get kickbacks from the pharmaceutical companies right uh yes we are all our essence energy material protons electrons our minds at peace will align our physical energy field exactly deb so let's talk about i don't want to like make those go away though so I'm going to pull out my little buddy. He just kind of broke apart, so I got to hold him kind of funny. He was on this cool stand that my kid broke, but whatever. So here's your body. Here's a skeleton. Yes, I am doing this. I am Karen the science girl today. So when you're standing, you should be standing with your feet hip distance apart. This is really a lot harder to do with him not standing. And your second toe pointing forward. If you don't stand that way, then all the bones, all these little bones in your feet can't connect with the ground properly. 
and then when that happens it causes other problems so your knees can't stand straight because they're actually bow legged out or they're knock kneed in and that then causes your femur to go out and that causes your hips to go out and then all of a sudden your hips which no one really thinks about is actually connected to your spine so if you don't stand right your low back can hurt okay this is something that is so elementary that no one unless you're in the healthcare field talks about I know that Deb is an occupational therapist so she knows exactly what I'm talking about but for the rest y'all check on how you're standing that's gonna be a huge huge thing for you <laughs> half of his body is gone now but it'll just be easier <laughs> poor arm so what do we stand on we stand on the ground right now energetically the ground is mother earth right she actually holds on and transmutes a lot of negativity you hear um, gurus and energy workers all the time saying you need to ground yourself you need to ground yourself well grounding is a pretty dense spiritual practice so you are what you're doing when you're grounding is you're taking all of the excess energy, all the energy that's not yours, all of the toxins and all those things and mentally like push them through your body, through your hands or through your feet and down into the ground where Gaia can then transmute it and turn it into something else. The problem with teaching people how to ground is that you then, oops, sorry, don't teach them how to fly. Mm. When you're so focused on grounding, you become denser and heavier, okay? It's like the, the feather in the bowling ball experiment to test out gravity, right? What falls to the ground first? The bowling ball, because it's heavier, because it has more mass, right? And the feather just like, because of air resistance, just whoop, 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 and then it falls, right? It still comes down, but it's not being pulled down by the heaviness. So when you are constantly dealing with all these outside forces starting from in utero you end up being up guys i talk in crazy little tangents all the time but it will it will come back <laughs> just bear with me and if you can't stay just watch the replay i promise it makes sense so standing standing right away is something that physiologically i talk to my clients about and i help correct their standing First thing off the bat, I give them these exercises called knee bends, which are really small, tiny movements that you do to, sorry, my internet hates me apparently, that helps your brain to, um, helps your brain, the proprioceptors in your brain is the nerve, is the brain cells, the tiny little cells and neurons in your brain that tell your body where you are in time and space. So for example, I used to, I guess I could stand up and do this so you see my hips. I used to stand, this is how I stand now, nice and straight, you see the space. I used to stand like this all the time, okay? And you can see, even when I back up a little bit, that I like, I'm all pushed out here, here's a sideways view, I'm lowering here, I'm doing all these things, and the reason why I would do that is because I am six feet tall. I have been tall my whole life, and... When I was in fourth grade, I got B cup boobs. So, and by the time I was in 10th grade, I had a G cup. So standing that way made it so that I wasn't taller than all the girls to the point where my boobs were like smacking them in the face. Um, and I was shrinking and I was hiding and I was trying to fit in, literally like contorting my body to fit into the standard of what beautiful was, which was someone who was like 5'8" and didn't have giant old titties <laughs> straight up that's what it i was born in 1988 so if you can remember the early 2000s that was like friends right jennifer aniston and courtney cox arquette and i guess that was the 90s too but just you know mary kate nashley olsen just all these really short they're not even really short but i'm six feet tall so for me someone who's like five six is really short right even though it's only a six inch difference have you ever seen six inch heels those things are fucking gnarly right so when we stand that way from a young age 
our bodies are going to be held down, right? Let's go back even further. Where do you learn how to walk from? If your base, if your feet need to stand on the ground solid, straight out, with your second toe pointing forward, how many of you actually stand this way? I'm going to guess none of you. Most of you probably, I wish this guy could turn out. My other one turns out. I should probably have grabbed her. Most of you probably stand with your feet in, with your toes almost touching, or with your feet out. Now, it might not be that dramatic that it's out and in like this, but for your second toe, which in this case would be my middle finger, I guess, to be pointing straight forward like this, that, like, no one stands that way. I have yet to meet a client who, the first time I look at them, that's the way that they're standing. Even gymnasts, even people who you would think would have amazing posture are not standing in proper alignment. So it's causing all these all this pain in the other parts of their body. Where do you learn to stand? From your parents, right? So your parents teach you how to walk. Babies, they only learn by watching. It's the only way that they can learn. So if you have a baby who's neglected, what have we learned? Lots of us who have studied child psychology. Children who aren't touched and played with and nurtured in the crib will literally just lay there and die like straight up there were all these studies done in orphanages um in russia i think where there was like an overbooked ward and there were all these babies and the nurses didn't have time to touch them all and they would literally just lay there and die they're like well i guess there's no reason for me to continue living because nobody wants to play with me no one wants to have contact with me nobody wants to touch me so most of our parents weren't that neglectful right we're all still alive obviously but when you have generations and generations of punishment-based discipline, when you look back and a hundred years ago, there were all these pamphlets going around saying, don't play with your baby, don't pick her up when she's crying, feed her at this time, change her butt when this at this time. That's how you create an obedient child. When the whole idea was based on obedience and children should be seen and not heard and there should not be any joy or pleasure going on um, when like children are just a necessity and we need them to fill our labor force and the way that you know think about the way that your grandma used to tell you about children now again i understand that i generalize a lot guys i don't need you telling me about your specific grandma who didn't do this i want you to try to think of the big picture because what a lot of people like to do is make their, themselves the exception to the rule instead of realizing all the places that they do actually fit into this rule so maybe it wasn't your grandma, maybe it was a teacher, maybe it was your uncle, maybe it was your friend's grandma, just someone that you know that held that belief that children should be seen and not heard, that children are just a necessity, that children are just here to fill in for when we die, and there's not a need to really, they need to just do as they're told, right? Sit down, shut up, do as you're told, this is what we believe, this is how we work, this is what you do. You were born into a baker's family, so you're going to be a baker and you don't have any choice, right? We can all kind of imagine this even if we've only ever seen a movie, okay? Does this make sense to people what I'm trying to say, these standards and beliefs that we had about ch children? A lot of people still hold them, I say we had, but we have. This is the way that society really thinks about children on a massive scale again now your micro might be a little bit different when you look at the macro of the world this is how the majority of the world thinks about children we teach our children how to walk because they're following us they're looking at us they're watching us so if you walk with your feet out your child is going to walk with her feet out if you walk with a, your feet in your boy is going to walk with his feet in he's going to be knock kneed okay sports are going to change it a little bit the activities they do are going to change it but for the most part people are walking around on the same feet okay everyone is walking around on the same feet that they were walking around on when they first learned what i mean by that is nobody ever thinks about changing the way that they walk how many of you before today had ever thought about changing the way that you walk yes i had children I had children should be seen and not hurt. See, exactly, Allison. It's very normal. <laughs> totally normal. I think it's really only been in the last, like, two decades that we've gotten into this idea that, like, holy shit, we're messing our children up a little bit. And even then, I don't believe 
that at all because I turned out great. There's been a lot of things that were weird in my life, but I still turned out great at the for the most part. Um, proprioception is our sense of position. I also work with patients and clients on postural awareness and balance. It's amazing how energy aligns when we are attending to our core and breath sensory integration is essential for growth and development i love where you have come and how you are also sharing that you have learned i love you deb um so with this sorry i keep doing that um when you're not thinking about the way that you walk it's also the same as when i come across clients who don't really know why they believe what they believe Okay, so this is how it all ties together. Maybe you don't have a chronic illness. Maybe you don't have low back pain. Maybe you don't have an autoimmune disease, but you've been diagnosed with ADHD or bipolar or depression or anxiety or any of these other mental illnesses, right? When you have um, a mental illness, it's your mind that is more in control than your body. So it hasn't quite physicalized yet. A lot, a lot of people I know have these, have all of them, right? If they're physic, if they've gotten to the point where they have an autoimmune disease, they most likely also have been diagnosed or think that they might have, or a doctor has said that they have depression, have anxiety, have PTSD. A lot of new... Hi, Penny. I think you auto-corrected my name, so I'm going to be okay with it, but... Hi, how are you doing? Um, my name autocorrects to Carolyn, just FYI, guys. <laughs> um, so, like, fibromyalgia, they now think, is the physicalization of PTSD. So if you had a really traumatic experience, either in your childhood or a car accident that didn't leave you physically scarred then, but all of a sudden, years, years later, it's coming back up, these are... Um, PTSD from childbirth, from the loss of a child, that can happen. That doesn't really get talked about. Um, if you had a stillbirth or a late, a later term, mis a later miscarriage or something like that, or had to have, um, you know, a late term abortion, one of those things that happens because of something going on, but you thought that you were going to give birth to a baby, that can be super traumatic. And we don't talk about this stuff. We don't. We don't give it a voice, and so we internalize it, and that goes back to the bowling ball. That just makes us heavier. It gets denser. We can't be this light, floaty chick up in the urethral world flying high because we've added more density to ourselves by holding on to our trauma, holding on to our beliefs. So this comes back to the core standards and values, which is what I said in my post yesterday. If you don't have, if you've got low back pain, it has to do with your beliefs and standards your back your low back again is attached to your pelvis and your pelvis is called the keystone to the body now if you know anything about architecture the keystone is like the main stone the one that they would put on the corner the one that was really holding up the structures back in like when they were building cathedrals and stuff the thing that if you took it out was going to cause the whole everything was going to fall apart. And you can see that, right? If we just like took out the pelvis, your mm -hmm. legs would be down here and your spine would be up here and nothing's connecting the two. So, and then think about, okay, I know my dude's arm's not there, but like, look at all this empty space, right? So I guess it's a good thing that his arm fell off. What's inside of all of this normally? That's like your guts and your core to your being, like what actually keeps you alive your heart and your lungs and your intestines and all of that sits in all this empty space that's supported again by your your pelvis but what's supporting your pelvis your feet right your feet are your standards your stand erds how you stand i probably just broke your brain apart a little bit right there so i'm going to try again your feet are where you hold your standards in your body low back pain 99% of the time comes from the legs very few people do I know their low back pain comes from anything else 
some intense car accidents can cause it too but here's the thing guys i told you at the beginning i read non-stop i have thousands of case studies of people curing themselves from cancer from having their whole body smashed these crazy things that the only thing that worked all they could do was blink their eyes and their doctor was like you'll never walk again and 18 months later they're literally walking out of the hospital so i don't believe any of that shit and if you work with me i will help you to also know that the power is all within you you can have degenerative discs and still no matter how old you are start believing that you have the ability to heal yourself because you are a god that's what this whole playground of earth is supposed to be about it's not supposed to be how do i stay heavy how do i stay in pain how do i stay grounded to gaia that's she doesn't like it she's trying to ascend too okay and i know i kind of went off here but like this is the important part if you don't stand properly your body hurts. You stand on your standards. Now, for all of those of you who've been paying attention, how did you learn to walk again? Your parents taught you. Where did you learn your standards? Your parents taught them to you. Your parents taught you your standards and your values. There are very few people on this planet that when you ask them why do they believe what they believe can give you a very solid answer that you can tell was crafted from them, right? I live in Utah, as I've said, and we have a not quite the majority anymore, but I'm sure all of you guys hear Utah and you immediately think Mormon. And for me, it was really crazy growing up here, non-LDS, and when I asked my friends why they believed it, it was just because that's how their family always was, even when they got older. And with everything going on with the gay community and how that's not like a thing anymore, our kids aren't going to know about the gay thing. And we in our the millennial sort of time frame, anyone 40 and under, I would say, for the most part, really don't have a problem with it. You had this mass exodus from the LDS church because people... They tried to come out and say if your kid is gay, then they can't get the sacrament or if they were raised by gay parents. I don't remember what it was, but you had like a ton of people all over the world leave the LDS church because of this, because they're holding a standard that the majority of their member or a good chunk of their membership didn't also believe because their membership had looked at it and questioned it and been like, why? Why is my son any different just because he loves men, right? This is what I mean by standards and evaluating your standards. What do I believe? Why do I believe it? Children should be seen and not heard. Do I believe that? No. Okay, but why don't I believe it? If your answer is just because my parents believed it and I don't want to teach my kids that way, then that's the most bullshit answer on the planet because you haven't replaced it with anything. If you've heard some of my other live streams, I always talk about how nature abhors a vacuum. You can't just not agree with something. You have to fill it in with an actual belief. If you just are like, no, I'm not going to raise my kids that way because my parents raised me that way and I'll figure it out. Guess what? 90% of people are still raising their kids the way they were raised, even though they don't like the way they were raised, just because they don't know of any other way to do it. What about reactive arthritis? Love, lower back pain comes from trapped emotions. Right, Tina, you're right, but the low back pain gets trapped. I just want to answer this. The, it gets trapped in here because this is the keystone to your body, okay? So I want to make this clear that yes, your emotions get trapped, but that's because you're not you're naturally grounded to Mother Earth, right? There shouldn't be a need for you to ground. She and you have a connection where that when you stand, she's pulling down all of the negative energy. You don't need to like mentally do extra for it unless you're misaligned. So if your feet aren't lined up and your knees aren't lined up and your hips aren't lined up, then your chakral systems aren't lined up and the energy can't flow and then it can get trapped up in here and cause the low back pain but trapped emotions can also hang out in your shoulders that's when you get like the weight of the world feeling um so all body pain is related to trap emotions it, you can't just specify it to the low back the low back pain 
comes from a lack of standards and values because you're not standing on them yourself. You haven't created your own. You you believed in what your parents thought or you're so frantically against what your parents thought that you're still not stable. So that's what I mean. Like if you're like, oh, I'm not going to believe what my parents did and I'm not in alignment with that, but you don't find out what you are in alignment with, then you're walking around like without a leg, essentially. It's as if you've just like cut off one of your legs because you can't just not be who where you came from okay whole life alignment comes from integrating all of it whole life alignment comes from being able to look yourself in the mirror and be like I am a racist because there is a part of me that can understand how racism works and I still love and accept me for all that I am and I choose not to act on those racist parts of me but I am still a racist or I am still a homophobe or I am still a pedophile all these negative things that were like I could never ever be that that's actually just taking it's like being this dude who's got his arm over here we are all a part of everything we are all made of star stuff right that's a lovely Carl Sagan quote that we all quote but what the fuck does that actually mean it means the air you're breathing right now was breathed by socrates it means that the water that you drank earlier today passed through the kidneys of hitler like we are all connected and if we can't integrate all of that into who we are and be whole and then stand firmly on the values and standards that we have created then we live in disease then we live in pain then we live in density and that's where 95% of the world is living is in this dense state of fear. They're too afraid to do the work. Guys, it's not easy. It is <laughs> the hardest thing I have ever done in my life to look at every single one of the things that I believe and ask myself, why I believe it and then having to come up with a better answer than because my parents told me or because that's just how it is I had to literally look in the mirror and be like I don't believe in gravity because there's a part of me or I believe that the earth is flat okay anytime I feel myself judging another person I then have to go to the mirror and integrate whatever it is that bothers me about them I've looked in the mirror and said, I am Donald Trump. Because there were parts of him that bothered me and I had to pull them out. His childishness, some of the things that he says, the, the racism, the, the white supremacy, things that I was raised, I was raised to not believe, but I never knew why. Okay, this is why I'm saying it's everything that your children misbehaving is because they are reflecting back at you a standard that you actually hold, that you've never, you've never actually done anything with. So if you believe my parent, my children should be seen and not heard, and then your kids are reacting to you and are very loud and crazy and you can't figure out why, it's because you haven't accepted that that's what your belief is. And if you're trying to say, I don't want to raise my kids the way I was raised, and yet I still don't like it when my kids misbehave, there's your disease, there's your discord. You can't say, I don't want to raise my kids the way my parents raised me, and then not have a backup plan, because everything you know you learn from your parents. So unless you do the hard, deep inner work to release the traumas and to process your standards... Maybe you do. Maybe you line up 95% with your parents, actually, once you really sit down and really look at it and really go through everything that you believe. Then all of a sudden you can, it opens a whole new world because you're like, actually, my parents did really good by me. And actually, this is all just my teenage angst and all of these rebellious things that I'm actually, maybe thinking about high school makes you super uncomfortable because there were some things you did in high school that you're like, oh my God, I hope nobody knows. <laughs> You don't need to tell people, but you need to integrate it into yourself. You need to love yourself for whatever it was that your child self did. Because as you guys have heard me say before, there are no victims. You can't walk around and be like, oh, I got into a massive car accident and my spine broke in three places and that's the reason why my low back hurts. Because there's lots of people who get in massive car accidents and their spines don't break. And I know that that sounds really harsh, but it's the truth. People get 
into massive car accidents and walk away with nothing. And then you listen to their their interview and you're like, oh, that person, you can feel it. Again, that heart that we were talking about, that heart mapping. They've got an open heart. They've got a clear energy. They, I don't know what it is yet, but all these people that seem to have miraculous healings, they have something in common where they knew so deep down that they were worth so much more than whatever this problem was going to give them that they were able to go from only blinking in the hospital bed to walking out of the hospital with nothing more than that knowledge in their brain that they could heal that they were worth it that there was something bigger to live for and they weren't going to die just as the opposite is true when we don't have standards and values and we try to force people into boxes and we don't re-emphasize why we have these beliefs and we don't let people talk about their traumas you have all these people who are committing suicide, all these people who are walking around in a fog from medication, all these people who don't think that they're worth anything, all these people who have behind closed doors all these amazing ideas, but then would never follow through with any of them because they're just too afraid. Because fear is such a, a biologically ingrained part of us that we, we don't even accept it. We spend years trying to fight the fear we spend years trying to um get over the shame and get over the guilt somebody earlier today posted chronic pain isn't what kills me it's the guilt and shame over having chronic pain well maybe the guilt and the shame is the reason why you have chronic pain to begin with when you go through life doing nothing but realizing what's wrong and then aren't willing to do the horribly painful, excruciating work of aligning yourself, then you're going to continue to be in the same place. When I started this live stream, I told you guys about my massages. They are not comfortable, okay? People who get work from me pretty much call me a sadist the entire time. Because the work that we're doing is stripping through and opening up and releasing trauma that's been held for years. You know, the way that you're walking, I said it before, is based on your your way your parents taught you to walk. But if you didn't have a stable walking to begin with, maybe you twisted your ankle all the time. That was my thing. I always twisted my ankle. But guess what? My at-home life wasn't very stable. My dad was really angry a lot of my childhood and my mom was very codependent. So I didn't realize that me twisting my ankle was a way for me to start learning the lesson that I need to stand on my own two feet. I need to create these own standards for myself. And it took me years and years. Degenerative arthritis. Like I think someone asked about that. I had de degenerative arthritis. I don't anymore. My knee pain is completely gone. I don't even need to take my collagen for it because... I have created such intensely strong standards and values that I'm able to check myself at every moment and figure out, is this an alignment? I even pushed this live stream by an hour because it wasn't aligning with my time schedule. I didn't want to feel rushed. I didn't want to feel pushed to complete it. So I pushed it back because I'm in control of my own being and my own density and no one and nothing has power over me. Even myself making a commitment to what time it is, I still have the power to change it, right? Instead of instead of the floppy boundary, which would have been me showing up 15 minutes late. It's more of a boundary for me to push the time and make that statement than it is for me to be like, oh, it's fine and just show up at 9.15 when I told everyone I'd be here at 9, right? Or saying that I'm all the different things that you say. Think of all the I am statements you have and then think, is that true? I'm lazy. Okay, then you're lazy. And these, this is very childish, uh, elementary, there we go, very elementary energy work. But it's still there. It's still the, there's so much science that can back it up that I don't see it anymore as separate. Just like I don't see my parenting separate from my massage, separate from my whole life alignment coaching, separate from any of it. It's the reason why I'm not saying I only coach moms anymore because 
I know that there are so many people in this world who just, they maybe they never want to be a parent, but they've got tons of nieces and nephews. So they want to know how to be around that person. Or maybe there's no kids in their life at all. And they just know that there is something wrong with them that they can't figure it on their own. So we're going to work through it together. Or they have this massive, brilliant idea how to change the world, but they are in so much pain that they can't even think straight. This is why I'm not niching anymore. This is why I'm not trying to even call what I do something specific because I am really just here to help with alignment, with, with making your whole life aligned. Every part of your life should be lined up so that it, you have one set of standards. You have one set of standards. You've got one pair of legs and that pair of legs takes you into every role that you play into your mothering role, into your teaching role, into your lover role, into your badass business role, into your being a daughter role. Every part of every hat that you wear sits on your head that's attached to your feet. So if your standards, your standards, what you stand on changes and is wibbly wobbly. Oh, I've got this set of standards when I'm with these people, but then I've got this set of standards when I'm with these people. Oh, but when I'm over here, I got these sets of standards. That's too many standards. You're too heavy. You're now walking around holding on to all of these beliefs and standards that believe belong to other people and you're being held down to the ground. You can't fly. You can't soar into the God and goddess that you were meant to be on this planet because you're letting everybody else make your decisions for you and you're not just doing the hard excruciate guys this work it's not easy and some days it's not fun and sometimes you have to go hide for six weeks while you integrate everything that you've learned so that then you can come out even more powerfully and more effectively and Spread the message that every person has. Every person has a message. Every child has a message. Every person has something they are passionate about. Every person has something that they, is their own power inside of them. Every person has a purpose, a real purpose on this planet. Now, maybe your purpose is to raise children. And that's what you do and you do it fucking amazing and you don't want to be out on stage, but you need to own that that's what you do and not discredit it by saying, well, I'm just a mom. I get that a lot. Well, I'm just a housewife. Just a housewife. Being a housewife is like the most important thing on the planet because you're raising the next generation. Take some pride in that. Really own that. Really find pleasure. You guys want to know where my pleasurable parenting comes from? It's from finding extreme, extreme joy. Just parenting. Disciplining. Teaching. My kids get this crazy version of me too, guys. I'm no different when I show up for you on a live stream than I am in my regular day-to-day -day life. That's what I mean by standards. I don't have fibromyalgia anymore. I don't have degenerative arthritis anymore. I've lost 40 pounds since last year. I have created a life that is stable and I've got my second toe pointing forward straight on till morning. And I am living the most incredible, amazing life. And even on the days that it's hard, I know that it's just a lesson. And I know on the days that my kids are having a really, really hard day, the tomorrow gets to be a new day that we get to try again and try to teach this lesson in a new way. It really interesting what you were saying about standards being, being carried from role to role. Yeah. Yeah. When you don't have the same set of standards, you're going to fall over eventually. That's what they mean by burnout or, um, a lot of these other things that happen especially when some of the standards that you're holding aren't even yours. And that's what most of us have. We have all these expectations that we've put on ourselves from society, from what our parents taught us, from what we're seeing on TV, from what our friends are doing. And we don't ever just get really, really quiet. That's what my post the other day was about. Getting really, really quiet and just listening to yourself, listening to that still small voice, the 
voice that answers immediately before the rest of your thoughts can catch up. That's where your standards lie. Your standards lie in your intuition, but your intuition works so fast that most people don't even hear it before the other voices step in and they're like, oh, actually this lady's really fucking crazy. You should probably just turn off this live stream and never listen. A part of you stayed on this whole time. A part of you is continuing to listen. So let me see if there's anything else. Do you guys have any questions? Is there any part of this that you're still kind of confused about? I'll sip on my coffee for a second and give you guys... Oh, I gotta stretch too. Ooh, sitting cross-legged for too long. So, I guess as a little small recap. Your pain, your chronic pain, your mental illness, the way your children behave... The root cause of it all is you not knowing and standing in solid, solid standards. My mentor has a, has, has three things she always has me think about. And I'm, I love it so much and I want to just like share it to everyone. And my mentor is so amazing that she doesn't believe in such a thing as copying. She just wants her message shared too, which is great. You have to have impeccable standards to have, to, to reach quantum flight, which is what I am doing, what I am teaching other people to do to reach this level of godliness, essentially, where your life is amazing no matter what's happening and you can alchemize any negative trigger within seconds, which is where we're getting to as well. Sometimes I still need to sit down and really write it out, but most of the time I can just think about it and process it quickly. Appreciation. Spot on. Awesome. Thank you, Diana. I'm glad you could... Deanna? Deanna. I'm glad you could be here. So you want to have impeccable standards. Impeccable, as in like nothing's getting through there. Okay? No matter what the test is that you're getting, your container is strong. Okay? This is part of the manifesting. I won't even get into that. But if you guys have questions about why your manifestation isn't working, it's probably because your standards are shit. The second thing is, let's see, impeccable standards, integrity, but what is it? It's supreme integrity. Okay, so the standards are the, the board itself, and then the integrity is how well you can take it, right? So that's, again, that's a part of your manifestation as well. Your life. Why isn't my life the way I want it to be? Why am I, why is this happening? Why do I have the same lessons? It seems like as soon as I get ahead, I get back again. That's your standards. That's your integrity. Those are the things that are being messed with all the time. You haven't done the real work. You've, you've just like sanded up the top, but you haven't like checked to make sure for cracks and you haven't filled in all of those cracks or any of that. So things are still leaking through your container. And the third thing is radical trust. This is probably the hardest part because you have to be able to know that your standards and your integrity are for you and to trust fully that as long as you stay in your own lane, your life is going to be miraculous. Your life is a continuous stream of miracles and you have nothing but pure gratitude for the whole world. And then you sit there and you just like wait. And I wouldn't even call it flow, Deanna, because my life doesn't flow very well, actually. It's very, very chaotic. It's being comfortable with being uncomfortable because your standards are constantly being tested. You, the integrity of those standards are constantly being tested. And then you have to trust that whatever is happening to you is happening for you. Either you're being prepared for an amazing, awesome gift of like, you can't even believe it because you're going to go meet Oprah or you're being tested to make sure that your beliefs around money are really there or you're being tested to make sure that your beliefs around your children. So that's the radical trust part that everything that's happening in your life is something that your higher self is calling in to help you become God level. I just... I always think about Hercules and that final scene when he's like swimming and he's going to die and then all of a sudden he changes and the, the fates go to snip his cord and the like, what's wrong? This cord won't snip, right? Because he turns into a god. But think about all of the trials and tribulations he had to go through 
to get to that point. Think of all of the tests and all of the things that he, uh, this is what I believe. No one and nothing will get through what I need to do. I believe in true love or, you know, whatever it was that he was doing. I believe that Meg should live <laughs> and I will die. You know, that's what we all have the potential to do. But are we all willing to go and decapitate a hydra? Are we all willing to go and brave the wilderness of our own being and sit there and cut through layers and layers and layers and years and years and years of beliefs and stories and all the things that we tell ourselves that just get heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and this chick no longer gets to be floating and at one with the universe, she's stuck on ground, really heavy, in a lot of pain, and doesn't know how to get out. Well, that's when you go find someone that knows how to get out. <laughs> it's like you tell other people, don't sit there and complain to me, what are you going to do about it? Well, I hear Quantum Structure, I love that movie. I've never heard of this movie, and I must go watch it because it's got my two favorite words in them quantum and structure love it um okay any other appreciation i appreciate you too thank you thank you julie awesome okay guys if you guys have any questions about this um i have a really big announcement coming on tuesday and then so just keep an eye out on that and um also going to be having a lot more things going on so I'm really excited to be back. Make sure that you guys follow my YouTube channel because this is the last time I will be going live on Facebook, most likely. I'm going to be trying to do everything from YouTube and just sharing it from there. And have a great Sunday. I love you all. Thank you.